nerf, I guess is a good word, to uh, nerf the other heroes there with Mana Burn and using Detonate from his Wisp to take out all those Skeletons. That was an awesome Detonate right there. If you just saw it, all those Skeletons went down in one Detonate. Really, really cool move. As soon as those Skeletons went down, they didn't really have much of an army, and personal loses uh, Lich right there to focus fire. We do have a high level uh, Death Knight now, too. Level 5 Death Knight with level 3 Coil. Obviously, Coil isn't going to be very effective versus Undead opponents, but it is going to be very effective at Coiling uh, allied heroes, uh, Undead heroes anyway, uh, your heroes, <clears throat> like the Lich, and also Coiling uh, weak ghouls. More importantly, it's going to be used to Coil these high HP um, Frost rooms when they eventually come out. So you notice that Frost, the um, Boneyard, uh, took a lot of damage there, and actually I thought it was going to live throughout the most of that fight. But however, they eventually did destroy it. But now we have two getting, we have two getting killed right now, uh, or two going up right at the moment. And he's going to or start redoing his. Uh, sorry, I keep getting these phone calls. It's distracting. Um, blah, 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 blah. What's that? Boneyards. Oh yeah, he's bringing up more frost worms. Just like in the other game, we're going to see frost worms be very, very effective here. And just like in the other game, frost worms are still very, very effective versus fiends, and and extremely effective versus all those ghouls. So, I mean, this is kind of an instinctive thing. I don't know if this is necessarily a, a newbie strategy or, or a newbie decision to make, but a lot of these play undead players are upgrading their ziggurats here, and they're. I mean, they do a good amount, good a, a good amount of damage, but they're still not going to be very, very useful. Uh, to bring this out. So, Green Undead Player just finishes bringing out his Death Knight. Uh, late Death Knight, obviously, in any strategy is a good idea to, you know, for an added bit of healing is pretty much what this is going to be used for, or for Focus Fire on the Night Elf opponent. But Mana Burn is going to make any of those heroes relatively useless. Obviously, Mana Burn is going to go off on the heroes that are the most threat, which is the higher level Death Knight of the uh, two, and the uh, Dreadlord first. Um, actually, if there was a Lich, that would be a... Yeah, the Purple Lich, too, is a, pr is a good amount of threat. Frost Nova is still very, very effective at taking out Gargoyles, because Frost Nova doesn't have a... Um, I just learned this from watching one of Frey's audio commentaries, actually. Frost Nova doesn't have a limit to how many units the damage on it and the Frost effect of it can actually attack. So if they're all clumped up, Frost Nova is going to hit all of those. So it's definitely a cool move there. So here we're seeing Sleep being used very effectively on this Lich in the background, because obviously the Lich is one of the bigger damaging uh, units in this game, a lot of, doing a lot of damage here. However, these ghouls are, are just really, really tearing up the fiends here. Now, proper scroll usage, again, we have scrolls on most of the uh, allied heroes here for the yellow and the teal team, and scrolls going off right after you see a frost over them. So the Lich is just dead now, you don't have to worry about casting those scrolls off anymore because you're all you have to deal with this focus fire pretty much, uh, instead of all that area of effect damage dealing all those ghouls. And, Forcing the TP out from by purple here. Actually, a late TP here. The green and purple player probably should have gotten out of that relatively sooner than that. They were they were kind of beat. We do have an orb now on the demon hunter. This is something different from what we uh, had last game. We have an orb of corruption, tier three shot from the undead going on the demon hunter. So every time uh, that, that actually doesn't stack, however. So if a demon hunter and a lich are attacking the same target, both with orbs, you're not going to get negative ten armor. You're only going to get that negative five. Uh, but still allows that uh, Demon Hunter to attack in the air, which are going to be the major counter to the Frost Arms now by the uh, those Undead players. So the only real feasible anti-air that they're going to have is to go produce a lot of Gargoyles to be able to, uh, to out-damage those things. Frost Arms is very, very effective in this Undead um, kind of try mirror, I guess, because uh, they're going to have something more powerful than the other Undead players. So having them out and having your opponents not have them out Obviously, a very good thing. Investing all that money and resources into detecting so fast and using it effectively. That's kind of what the strategy is all about. It's all about countering the counter, managing your resources properly with your teammate. Timing is a big thing, and you know, making that uh, tech work for you. If you wait too long, your opponents are going to be able to kind of balance it out. You know, they're going to be able to eventually get to that high tech. They're going to be eventually uh, able to counter all those frost worms and all your frenzy ghouls. So you have to make your tech work for you. You have to make the hit and make the damage get dealt while you have the advantage of that. And that's obviously in, in 1v1s as well as in 2v2s. Uh, we're actually going to see this game end relatively quickly here without a very exciting conclusion. Uh, these fights, you know, you know, pretty much lose. Are, they're going to have to TP out. Um, that's the uh, teal Nile player and the yellow and dead player are going to TP out with this right before he dies. And because most of the army has already been taken out, we do have a level 6 death right now 
which is going to have all those uh, animated dead things. Again, just causing problems more than anything. It's, uh, it's kind of a pity that he was forced to TP out and use them, but he did his damage. You know, there's nothing a lot that they can do. Uh, they're, they have 7,000 gold in each of their gold mines. You know, they still have a good amount of uh, gold to be able to make up a counter to this. So I kind of think that they left this game a little bit early, uh, but the damage was dealt. Maybe they got too frustrated with the strategy. They couldn't figure out how to counter it. Um, they actually really lost the hero battle there, you know, not having enough uh, hero levels to, to beat them out. And we're going to have mass frost worms coming out now for the yellow player. We're not going to see all of them produce and really be used in action. That was the last big fight there. Game ends there. You can kind of see how the strategy works. Now, a little bit of background on the strategy. I said it was an adaptation of kind of the three strategy. The strategy was used very much in 3v3 matches um, where you would have your two allies feed one, um, one of the allies, all the one of your teammates, all the resources, and get that guy teched up and mass the army as soon as possible and kind of make him the leader of the whole pack and, and let him with the you know superior tech or superior army size, or preferably both, um, being able to beat your opponents. And it's kind of a predictable strategy in 3v3s. You can kind of scout it out really relatively early, you know. You see two opponents that have nothing, and then you see one guy with everything. You kind of know who your target's going to be. Take out those weak opponents with your three teammates early on, and then you only have to deal with that one guy who might have superior tech or unit advantage, but you have three teammates on your time that are, are three teammates that are useful uh, on your team, and you can eventually push through with this. So, thinking that is the counter to the three strategy, it's kind of the same principle with this. You have to decide. You, you have to really be able to either push that Night Elf player and stop him from feeding those resources to the Undead player really early on. And that's extremely hard to do unless you scout it out early. So as soon as you scout it out, I mean, all I can see is beating it is probably a Tower Rush, putting a lot of offensive uh, pressure on that Night Elf player and stop him from doing uh, the resource feeding to the Undead player. Because then the Undead player has all this tech and he's not able to fortify it with anything because he doesn't have the resources to uh, continue doing it. So that's pretty much the counter to the strategy. However, you know, uh, a little bit of information on how successful a strategy is, at least on the uh, Western and Azeroth ladders. Um, they have to make so many accounts because they go on winning streaks. They win like 15 games in a row, and then they have a very difficult time finding games. So they can't, you know, play games anymore. So they just make new accounts and do it all over again. You know, so it's kind of a real, a, kind of a fun strategy. Obviously, very, very effective. Uh, as I don't play that many 2v2 ATs, I've been playing a lot more lately since I've been wanting to do this audio commentary. But if you're a 2v2 player and you've been playing a lot of them, or even if you're a 3v3, I mean, tell me if you've seen the strategy before and tell me what you guys think the counter to the strategy was. I'd love to hear your comments, and everyone else likes to read your comments too. Uh, most of your comments, anyway. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's about it. I hope you guys appreciated the audio commentary. I won't talk your ear off too much longer. Uh, stay tuned for my next one. It won't be a Dota one. Uh, I know you guys kind of get frustrated when you see Dota audio commentaries. But the Dota is definitely something big in the scene, and there's a few Dota fans on WCR, so hopefully they appreciate the work that goes into it. And I, again, apologize to anybody who doesn't like the Dota content. I think maybe in the future, if I'm going to put out Dota content, I'll also put an additional uh, bit of Warcraft content, you know, for ladder strategies and things like that. You guys listen to. Thanks again for listening to my audio commentary, guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.